I wrote a book called Acting in Translation about the nature of translation for the stage, which is different than translating other types of literature. So for this uh, paper I call Language in Action, uh, it's taken from that study. Bertrand Russell wrote, the things we say are all unsuccessful attempts to say something else. If this statement of Russell's is true, then is translation, or indeed effective communication with others, even possible? Is there even such a thing as real conversational explicature, as linguists call it, or only implicature? Polyglot George Steiner wrote in his detailed investigation of language after Babel that we may never be clear in our use of language because we will always, quote, mean endlessly more than we say, unquote. We may see that paralanguage, that is tone, volume, pronunciation, duration, intonation, inflection, and all oral aspects of diction and speech will always imply more than language alone could ever mean. This brings us to issues inherent in the nature of translation for the stage. Unlike other literary forms, some theater practitioners would argue, the words on the play, the words on the page of a play are written to be performed and not only to be read. So there is a heated controversy among linguists and theater practitioners over the idea that it is action, with a capital A, that is the core of stage translation and not words alone. This notion of action was described to acting students by Russian Moscow art theater director Yevgeny Lanskoy at the Stella Adler uh, Conservatory in the late 1980s where I studied acting. It is this notion of action that underlies all our utterances and may be called by linguists the conversational implicature versus the explicature of the spoken word or speech acts. Indeed, the converse, controversy among linguists and theater artists as to how language may or may not determine thought, the Saper-Whorf theory or hypothesis, is also at issue here. This theory is one well known to communi communication professors, of which I am one. And Neil Postman's course, called Language and Human Behavior, sparked my interest in this subject, as did my experience as an actor performing on stage. Neil taught semantics, but I thought language and human behavior could be the name of an acting class. Behavior is the actor's métier. Since language as spoken utterances is so much a part of the modern theater, it's important to explore just how the paralanguage of acting is key to the translation of works for the stage, which result in performance. Master playwright Anton Chekhov brought realism to the stage in the late 19th century, and his work, along with that of director, actor, and teacher Konstantin Stanislavsky, changed the nature of how language, thought, and action are approached in the realist play script and thus in our lives. As an actor, I learned that what we utter is based on what we desire to do to others. This is the basis of action as described by directors from the Moscow Art Theater. Action was defined by my teacher, Lanskoy, a former director at the Moscow Art Theater, as movement plus desire or purpose with movement. That is, you have a reason to speak and to do things on the stage. One is reminded of J.L. Austin's How to Do Things with Words. Of course, this is the job of the actor. Russian playwright Anton Chekhov changed the course of modern acting with his last four masterpieces, Seagull, Uncle Vanya, Three Sisters, and The Cherry Orchard. He's considered one of the most enigmatic and gifted, and certainly is the most translated playwright since Shakespeare. Yet the observant Chekhovian actor, Ian McKellen, noted 
the ironic truth that, quote, we don't do Chekhov, we do translations of Chekhov, unquote. Even more ironically for McKellen, this is especially true of British translations of Chekhov's plays. The Dear Chaps and I Say Old Boys of Tom Stoppard and Michael Frayn make these interpretations seem dated and quaint to us. But we have seen in the past eight years, certainly, more American translations of Chekhov's last masterpieces in New York City, both off and on Broadway than ever before. Right now, there's a cherry orchard by the roundabout on Broadway in a new version by Stephen Karam, who just won the Tony for his other play, The Humans. Um, this may be because Chekhov's style more than any other playwright, models our human behavior and aspirations in a most appealing and intricate fashion, inimitable to the present day. Approaches to the translation of plays has changed recently as the definition of a play, quote, as a blueprint for performance, unquote, has been accepted or not. Here are two competing opinions. This from Vladimir Nabokov. What is translation on a platter, a poet's pale and glaring head, a parrot's screech, a monkey's chatter, and profanation of the dead? Another side sees translation differently. This is from Thomas Kilroy. He's Irish and a famous playwright who has also translated Chekhov. To those who are bothered about adaptation, seeing them as parasitic or even a violation of the original, there is simply only one answer. The history of theater is a his history of adaptation. Theater has always enjoyed this activity, has seen it as essentially theatrical, and it has never felt that the integrity of the original has been damaged in any way." Unquote. As one may glean from the comments above, views on the nature and practice of translation for the theater vary enormously. Chekhov did not want his plays translated. He thought no one outside Russia would understand his characters or his culture. He regretted he was unable to prevent their translation abroad. Chekhov wrote, quote, why do you want my work to be published in America and in a ladies, which means an atrocious, translation. I think, I think he was talking about Constance Garnett. Uh, but Chekhov has hit on the core question of translation in general. How might translators translate character and context for the foreign sensibility? Should the translator be faithful to the literal words of the source playwright, or may he or she adapt words or situations to those familiar to contemporary audiences? This notion of equivalence is debated by linguists and translators over the centuries. It's only recently that the text of a play has been recognized as, quote, not an end in itself, but as a kind of blueprint that playwright and translator create, unquote. That was John Clifford, another uh, translator. This blueprint is one for the actor and director However, there is much controversy over the issue of understanding translation for the stage as an extension of stagecraft, an inter integral strand of that multi-layered process of making a play work on stage, which is how theater practitioners may see play translation. Linguists, translators, and theater practitioners are not in accord on this issue. The challenges of translating for the stage include the idea that a block-for-block block or word-by-word word translation would be anathema for a theater production. Language is derived from culture. The connotations and denotations of our words come from centuries of dynamic and variable usage and change irrevocably over the years. Translator James Magruder said, a truly stage-worthy translation should only last 20 years. And if Brian Friel, who's a popular contemporary Irish playwright and translator, wants to tackle Chekhov, it's good for the cherry orchard, it's good for the audience, and it keeps Friel writing if he's taking time off between original works, unquote. <laughs> 
but other translators assert that a single translation should stand over all time. As revered playwright uh, translator Richard Wilbur stated uh, over the last few years, he said, death to adaptations and adulterations. The translators whom I most esteem are those who do not translate pro tem, but work in the wild hope of doing the job once and for all, unquote. Indeed, I think it is a wild hope. I ask, how may the job be done once and for all when language itself changes so appreciably over time? Uh, writer and play translator Christopher Campbell asks, is there a single word that you can translate from one language to another? I doubt it. Everything we say has so much history and echo and nuance, unquote. And George Steiner announces categorically, there are no translation. Pain is not bread, home is not heim, English has no exact equivalent. The well-known Italian proverb, traditore traditor, the translator is a traitor, implies with Nabokov's uh, poem that the entire enterprise is a betrayal. In play translation, in play translation uh, particularly, it's the actor who must use the language and who knows that, that communicating the meaning of words is not only an intellectual exercise. Understanding the social context of a play, especially one that involves wide differences in time, culture, and structural complexity, is vital. Translator scholar Rainer Schulte notes, we associate the word with its vis visual situation. In the theater, all plays involve specific situations known as the circumstances of the play. The actor's contribution to plays, the use of his or her imagination, is based on these circumstances set up by the playwright, and circum the circumstances provoke action. So the play itself is not so much made up of words, it's constructed constructed from the actions of the characters who speak because they have causal desires that evoke what they say. The words written on, by the playwright on the page, the utterances of the characters, are the last things that happen within the characters. Our desires provoke our speech. The Sevalad Meyerhold, famous Russian director and student and actor uh, with Stanislavski, said, words in the theater are only a design on the canvas of motion. So what does this have to do with the translation of plays? Well, if words on the page are only a map of the performance and not the territory itself, doesn't it follow that we must know the circumstances, historical, political, and social, of characters' utterances in order to interpret them effectively? And that even so-called translators, who don't know the source language, may still understand these human circumstances and so interpret the play? In any case, that's the claim of many famous playwrights who translate Chekhov, Ibsen, and the Greeks and other writers for the stage without even knowing the source language. Let me conclude with a one-word example from Chekhov's The Cherry Orchard, now on Broadway, as I mentioned in a new version, he calls it, by Stephen Karam. Um, Chekhov's last play, The Cherry Orchard, is considered a comedy, and it ends with a great irony. While everyone in the family leaves for a new life, the old servant fears is left alone, sick in the house, and exhales this final word. It's nedotyapa in Russian of the play. But there are 35 different translations who have, that have all these different words for nedotyapa, which may not be translatable. Listen to this. A good for nothing, you silly old nothing, a silly idiot, a silly galoot, a silly billy, an old muddler, an old fool, a pathetic old fool, an adulpate, a job lot, a nincompoop, an absolute washout, a duffer, daft, half-chopped, 
half-baked, a bungler, a lunkhead, a bonehead, a booby, a numbskull, some kind of clown, useless slumber, a silly young cuckoo, and a young flibberty gibbet. <laughs> he got that from Shakespeare. I don't know if you realize. That was Paul Schmidt's translation, which is one of the ones that's used most. We must admit that variant word choices could change meanings and actions at the close of Chekhov's last play. But words are not the be-all and end-all of meaning. You must see and hear the play. Let me end with an observation of Janet Malcolm's, who has written extensively on Chekhov in her book, Reading Chekhov, and on articles about translation in The New Yorker. She says, as everyone who has studied transcripts of tape-recorded speech knows, we all seem to be extremely reluctant to come right out and say what we mean. Thus, the bizarre syntax, the hesitations, the circumlocutions, the repetitions, the contradictions, the lacunae in almost every non-sentence we speak, unquote. Malcolm has just described the dialogue of a Chekhov play <laughs> and how language and meaning is not only made up of words, but what we feel underneath them. Finally, as Samuel Beckett wrote, I can't go on. I'll go on. Just kidding, I'm done. <laughs>